Foles. As they get ready for one of those wild plays in football, the onside kick where that front line for the Lions will try and bowl over the front line for the Calgary Stampeder hands team. And the hands team for Calgary tries to hold them up while the receivers behind them at about 12 yards corral the football. Alberta native Mark Killam has his troops ready for what Paul McCallum will have. Any scenario where you kick deep or yeah, you, have to, you have to go short now, don't you? Inside the of, yeah, yeah, inside of a minute, I, I think you've got to try the onside kick. Especially with John Cornish. Tailback for the Calgary Stampeders. Now here we go. Game on the line for the BC Lions here. Can they execute it? That's his biggest play of the day, and the Stampeders have the football at the Lion 50 yard line. It's one of his only plays of the day, Chris. Nick Lewis makes a huge one for Calgary. And again, the front line, the kick is perfect from Paul McCallan. He puts lots of air under it. He gets it that required 10 yards. In fact, he gets it to about 12, 13. So it's right where he needs it. But it's Rob Cote's block on Adam Big Hill. So Big Hill can't get there and mess with Nick Lewis. Allows Lewis to come down with it. gets off. Procedure. Calgary number 60. Five-yard penalty remains first down. Interesting. Stops the clock quickly, too, on that play. Just two seconds coming off the clock, and now Calgary in that long first down. Veteran Abi Khan in there. Yes. An extra offensive lineman. Out of the double tight end formation back in midfield. The Lions and Cornish is dropped for a gain of two by Dante Marsh. Lions use their timeout yet? Yes, I believe Mike Benavides just did. And it goes back to that thought you had a few seconds ago, Chris, about, you know, at timeout. 59 seconds. BC. At 59 seconds, was there still time to kick it deep? But you got to consider a couple of factors there. Even though they may get the football back if they get the stop right here. One being that if you kick it deep, you get the time that elapses on the return. Right. That could be five to ten, maybe twelve. You got Larry Taylor back there, and now you're looking at inside of 40 seconds instead of 52. So that has to be factored in. I think they had to go for the onside. Lions can no longer stop the clock. Second and 15. Pitch the corners from the side. He's got a crease. And up he goes. A big first down. Come on. Over 100 yards on the game. And John Cornish has silenced the fans here at BC Place. And he's got a whole bunch of fans right here in the lower mainland that are enjoying this because in the play the Lions defense had to have, they relied on the guy they've gone to all game long. Keep, keep in mind and all year long that it was a game against BC where Cornish had just minus one yard rushing early in the year. They really turned this thing around for Calgary and got them on a roll. Three straight playoff games with a 100-yard performance for Cornish. Adding a few more and taking a few more seconds off the clock. Calgary in a position to win six consecutive games. The 11 of 13 and Drew Tate enjoying the moment. Brilliant play calling by Dave Dickinson. 
Kevin Bland, poise and composure. What a game for the Calgary starting quarterback. Into victory formation now. They all talked about Kevin Bland with a chance for a storybook ending and somebody with a cheap shot. I think it was Corey Banks. Well, Banks is trying to get there to try and save some time and touch Glenn down. The Lions can't stop it. Major foul, unnecessary roughness, BC 24. The penalty is declined, so Calgary may run the clock. Run the clock down this final snap. It's game over. Calgary's going to the Great Cup. A week ago, John Huffnagel said, I didn't like the way our offense started. Didn't like the way our defense finished, but they won. He had to like the way they started today, and he has to love the way they finished. Clock ticking down. Road teams victorious today. First time that's happened since 07, and it will be the Calgary Stampeders and the Toronto Argonauts in the 100th Grey Cup. You can see the shock etched on Mike Benavides' face. Well, absolutely, and that discussion as to whether or not the bye to the final helps you or hurts you will go on as the road teams advance in what a game for Kevin Glenn. You mentioned the last time the road teams got to the Cup 07, the same year that Glenn wasn't able to play in the Great Cup because of the injury in the Eastern Final. 12-year veteran, and Kevin Glenn finally gets his opportunity to lead a team into the Great Cup game. And there will be a new champion as the defending champions have been ousted, and Kevin Glenn standing by with Ryan Rashad. All right, Chris, thank you very much. Glenn just being congratulated. Kevin, I don't know that anybody had more invested in this than you did this season. Talk about what this victory means to you right now. I'm, I'm, in, I'm in so shock right now. Like, I don't even know what to say. I'm so, I'm so excited. Um, man, I just don't know what to say. Talk about the first drive, Kevin. So much. The first drive, it was a big one. I mean, we came out, uh, they, they, they gave us pressure. I found Mark Quay up the scene, uh, untouched. He caught it, scored, and I think that set the tone for the rest of the day. Uh, we, we, had a, we had this mentality that we weren't going to lose, and I think that's been with us the whole season, and, and it hasn't stopped. Kevin, you throw the pick six. You come right back and drive the ball downfield. Was that a turning point for you? I think so, you know, but, I mean, that kind of stuff happens to the best of them. You know, and, and one thing that I, that I understand, those kind of things are going to happen, is how, is how you bounce back. What's up, baby? There's Khalif Mitchell congratulating so Kevin. Bounce back, and we did as a team, not just me. And we go into the we go into the ship. We talk we talk about that, Kevin. You had to watch back in 2007 after getting your team there. You now have a chance to lead a team to a great cup. It's still sinking in, I'm sure. What does it mean to you? It means everything. You know, I, I don't think I've ever been this more excited. It's probably been a couple of situations in my life. I told you, my my graduation, my wedding. And probably the birth of my two kids, but this is this one, this is up there with them. I, I, I man, I, I can't wait to call my father. That's my number one fan right there. I, I'm, I'm so excited. I don't know what to say. Seriously. Congratulations, Kevin. Enjoy it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Chris. Uh, uh, Kevin Glenn just said it all, didn't he? A guy who has not got enough credit for a good career in this league if you get a chance to elevate his status, if he can provide one more win. I mentioned it off the top of the show. He was the insurance policy for the Calgary Stampeders going into the season, and they had to cash it in in game two when Drew Tate was hurt. Ten win season led by Kevin Glenn. His best season as a pro, I believe, with the help of Dave Dickinson as his offensive coordinator. And when Drew Tate got the start in the semifinal. You wondered how Kevin Glenn would bounce back from that psychologically, leading the football team to the playoffs with 10 wins, and then being asked to sit down and take a backup role. Drew Tate 
with one throw to Robbie Bryant, got him here, hurt his wrist. Kevin Glenn had to get up off the mat again like he's done his entire career, and he does it in a big way. Over 300 yards passing and three touchdowns. Let's go back Great to the game. field. Brian Rashad with John Cornish. Yeah, thanks, Chris. John